Hey YouTube, hey I'm returning here, Alan Mills. Welcome to my channel. Got a little surprise for you today. We're actually visiting another wood turner. His name is Pork Chop. Well, that's what we call him. Let me take a sneak inside here. Knock, knock. We come for a visit today. Hello. How we doing? This is Pork Chop. What you working on, bud? We're attempting to uh, turn a bowl today. This old piece of scrap wood laying around the house. Think it's old? Not sure. Looks like maple to me. <laughs> maple, old, maybe right. Whatever. It was free anyway. Yeah, free wood. We're turning some free wood. Today. Well, all right. Still not quite there to get all that wing off her. Let's try doing this. Go out to this corner a little bit more. Checking my tool res clearance. Let's see here. Your, your audios will come out messed up with that face shield down. Apologize for that. Uh, I like I prefer to do a pull cut versus a push cut in something that is not round because I got more control. I feel like I got more control in pushing. It's, that's just me. Some people do it different. That's the way I like to do it. Tyler Turners. That's right. We'll try a new tool. Doug Thompson tool. Never tried it before. Well, if I hate it, sorry, Doug Thompson, but I don't think I'm going to hate it. See if I can't knock off a few little sharp corners. Didn't check the uh, clearance yeah. good enough. All four corners. Yep. <laughs> oh, I've done worse. <laughs> oh, yeah.
dogs can work. You ain't kidding. I guess that, that deep, deep root helps clear the chip. I think it's, it being smaller, it, it works better some, in some ways than being a bigger one. Stop it with your hand before, you, before it stops for this jagged edge. You won't do it. Before. Yeah, it's not a good thing. You won't do it but one time, I can tell you that. Yeah, you may as well get on a table saw. <laughs> <laughs> you won't do it but one time, I can promise you that. Wait till it stops before you go to grabbing it. It's the nature of the beast. It's the nature of the beast. Yeah, you gotta become ambidextrous. You gotta become ambidextrous. That's just the way it is. And I still got that there golden thing there. I need to get out. Get out of that thing. I know one thing I can do. Stay away from the stay away from the parts that's cut already. If I don't take too much off and make my bowl even smaller. That I like to do. Nah, need to go just a little bit more that way. That way, leave that line, he won't take off. Won't take, he won't make the bowl even smaller. We're still trying to establish the getting that out of there now. Now, leave, leave the back line alone. But it's done right in the end. You have to pin on the angle. You've got to go left and right. you got to change up. Sometimes it gets awkward. I know it's not right, and this ain't really for outside, but it'll work. See how fuzzy the little shavings are? That should give you a pretty good finish right off the two. Yeah, I wouldn't see. I wouldn't take much to sand it at all. That's up for about easily. You can start hitting that for 180. Yeah, I like that. And it does wonders for two months. Faster is better, actually, when you're scraping. Well, we're between the And now I'm going level. Stay on. My handle's up just a little bit. See those, how easy them two marks come out? Yeah. Oh, I like that. I like that. Yeah. That's pretty wood, too. It is. Well, I sort of screwed up. Get myself in the picture now. 
I screwed up and I forgot to hit the record button, but we sanded it, the outside, and pork chop put a, uh, a coat of uh, Mahoney's walnut oil on it, which it looks very, very good. And now we're moving around to the inside. We're going to start working on it and get it hollowed out. This is Mahoney's walnut oil from, from Woodcraft. <laughs> not affiliated with Woodcraft, but... And my fault for not recording it. Fun times, fun times. Adjust the camera just a little bit here. Pretty soon he'll be taking that tailstock away. He won't be in the way. Well, this next part is about uh, just hogging off wood and getting down to where he can remove the tailstock and start hollowing things out. So I've speeded things up. Alrighty. Now we got it pretty much round. Got the thing established pretty much round. Got our edge established now where we don't go back to it. I know from past experiences you go back to it, bad things happen. Sometimes. You mind if I try a little bit? Not at all. I want to see how this turner number two, hurricane two does. AM uh, wood turning is going to step in here, and like I said, I don't have a name yet. Any suggestions would be awesome. This is a five eighths bow gouge. I just purchased it. It's a hurricane, so wasn't high dollar, wasn't wasn't cheap either, but bow shouldn't fly off, but it is wood. Well, you know, things happen. It is wood turning, so. That's why we always wear a face shield, just in case. You might can take some of that meat off the middle there, and you, you even give it more established if you get some more of that meat off of there. Oh, we'll get that. Hollow that sucker out. Again, this is just hogging away more material, trying to get down to our final depth. It's a pretty little bowl. It's, uh, it's maple. It was cut down probably a year and a half ago or so. Down yeah, probably about a quarter inch. I think we can fix that with a scraper though. All right, now you see how rough looking that is? Yes. This is the magic of the scraper. And it's big enough. One, I like to have even bigger one. But a big one, you can let it hang off further. The bigger they are, the further you can hang them off. Off the tool rest, I mean. That's what she said. Yeah. <laughs> Another bleeping moment. <laughs> hey, that was G-rated. Okay, even though it's a negative rake, I still got my hand up just a little bit. Partly because I'm nervous about catches. <laughs> but, I, but I know it's a very safe tool. It's probably the safest lathe tool uh. in your arsenal. 
I don't know if I'd go that far, but... Even a parking tool can get you more in, in trouble. In, in my opinion, no. Uh... You, you notice how rough. You see all two marks and stuff. Yeah, I do. I see them. Let me show you how easy it come out. About a thousand RPM, yeah, roughly. Probably could have put that with a sharpener. Huh? Got a groove there kind of right around the lip. So I'm working on trying to get it out. I got a couple ripples across here. Let me uh, hit this with a sharpener real quick. This stuff, man glitter. Now check out that on the inside there. Oh yeah. I think pork job just fell in love with scrapers. Yeah, for sure. That makes a huge difference on the inside. You've seen all those tool marks. This one. And it would have took forever trying to straighten it out with a with a regular gouge. <laughs> Power sanding down. We ready to sand it. Power sanding down. Alright, I'm gonna be laid out here. That's easily start out with 180. The advantage of power sanding it just doesn't take very long at all. About 500 RPM or so. And you've got a good finish straight off the tool. It takes very little sanding and you can start off with a higher grip. Check that out. Yeah, that's a pretty bold. That feels like 320 to me. <laughs> it's pretty dang gum smooth. Yeah. Dirt, 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 Little piece there. If we'd have hit that with sand and sealer first and then, then sand it, I would have filled all that in. Yeah, well, it's trying to just teach folks how to make stuff. And I don't know if you're supposed to put heat in this or not. Yeah, set it faster. Huh? You'll cure it. Set it faster. A couple faint two marks still. We can get scraped out. It'll be alright. I should have a face shield on too. We tend to kind of, toward the end of the project, tend to kind of 
slapped on some of that. Well, just turning by itself is a risk, <laughs> an inherent risk. You know, we try to minimize thing. the things that can happen, but uh, thing can still some work. things we accept. Yeah, this sucker can still fly off and still knock your, send you in the twilight zone. Nice. That's pretty. Got a little chatoyance there, too. That's pretty. Now, next step is the final step, which is flip her around and do the bottom. Here, Pork Chop is installing his cold jaws, and uh, I kind of quieted things down a little bit and speeded things up. It's fun watching people turn screws. <laughs> With the bowl mounted on the cold jaws, reversed, pork chops able to use a bow gouge and um, pull cut the tenon off to clean up the bottom of the bowl where we would, had held it to the chuck to hollow it out. And here he's using a negative rake scraper to clean up the tool marks and um, just make things cleaner, nicer, smoother on the bottom, make it easier to put a finish on. What grip we got on there? I don't remember. I don't remember. Feels pretty good though. <laughs> About 200, 300. 400 somewhere around here. Yeah. Whatever you're comfortable with. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I see you don't have those roundy, roundy lines. Not as bad as a few, but not, not like you normally see. That's nice and slick and done already. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> Don't mix your finish and don't put your finished rags and wood chips and, and put them in a bag and throw them over in the corner because it'll start a fire and burn your house down. Trust me, wood finish, any kind of finish and wood chips. So keep your finish, finished rags and wood chips separate. Alrighty. Looks good. I like it. Does it set fire? <laughs> it actually does. Yeah. <laughs> good job. Thank you. Oh, let's get you in the shop. Good job for you too. I guess that's going to be it today for the Blue Collar Wood Turners. <laughs> Thank you for your watching and uh, like it and subscribe it if you don't mind. Give us that big thumbs up. I appreciate you coming and visiting. I'm, I'm glad we had a chance to come by. Thanks for coming. Enjoy it. Thank you.